So good afternoon, I'm Rob McCammon, the Director of Product Management with CleverSafe, and I'd like to talk to you now about how the CleverSafe Dispersed Storage Network is being used by one of our customers to meet their requirements for a global file system. In thinking about what they needed, this uh, organization, which is a sales and marketing company that has branch offices literally around the globe to service their uh, clients wherever they're located, um, was looking to do a couple of things. They, they wanted to improve on their existing storage architecture, which was based on having either SAN or NAS storage uh, independent systems in each of these uh, offices around the world. Uh, the only way they were able to share data in that environment was to FTP it or email it around. Uh, they weren't able to get good utilization of the capacity in all the different offices. You know, you'd have too much capacity in one office and not enough capacity in another office. Uh, and from an IT point of view, this was a challenging environment to support. They had to support a number of different and distinct systems in different remote locations with no centralized uh, capability or ability to monitor or manage the system. So that's what they were looking for. Lower overall costs through better capacity utilization, better services in terms of the ability to share data more easily across all the different offices on a worldwide basis uh, and an easier to manage and therefore more reliable system. The solution that we put together with them um, involved CleverSafe storage technology and cloud gateway technology from um, one of our partners, Panzura. So the architecture that we provided to them to provide this global network attached storage type architecture uh, involves Panzura cloud gateways in each of their uh, remote offices around the world. And you can see um, the different cities where those remote offices are located represented on the slide. We've got Mexico City, New York, Buenos Aires, London, Dubai, Bucharest, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. Now the actual storage resources, the DSNet, is split between uh, London and New York City. They have four data centers in London and five <coughs> data centers in New York City. And each of those data centers hosts two of our storage appliances. So they've got a very geographically distributed or at least data center distributed system where if they lose uh, one data center, they lose access to two storage nodes for a second, um, but because their uh, erasure coding parameters are a width of 18 uh, and a threshold of 11, meaning out of 18 slices created from any piece of data, they only need 11 to read the data back, they could actually lose um, three of those nine data centers and still have availability of data and still have the data safely stored. Do that slicing over all the... Uh all the areas, is it location aware? Like if I'm at that city, will I get the 11 slices that are closest to me in that data center or does it read from all available? You, the, the system will request uh, the slices mm -hmm. from those storage nodes, which its recent data shows it have been responding most quickly. So that could correlate to physical location in a lot of cases. But if um, for some reason slices that, slice stores that were geographically farther away were responding more quickly, it would choose those instead. And it frequently actually uh, re-ranks its assessment <coughs> speed with which the different storage nodes are able to respond to its request. So it's pretty adaptive in real time in a way uh, in, in doing that networking optimization. Now, it was important for them that these uh, gateways provided SIFS and NFS support. That's what all their legacy applications obviously used to talk to their network attached storage, so they didn't have to change any of those. And then the Panzura gateway, uh, in talking to the DSNet, uses our Amazon S3 uh, compatible uh, RESTful interface. So it's also doing a, a protocol conversion, if you will, a storage protocol change between the remote office and the centralized mm -hmm. storage pool. Now, um, in case you're not particularly familiar with Panzura, what they really provide is a very sophisticated, uh, globally accessible file system that also addresses the need for uh, local file server-like performance. So each of the Panzura gateways in a number of different offices uh, cooperate with one another 
to maintain this centralized control over the data store, taking care of things like uh, access locking so that you don't get into uh, any problems with multiple uh, readers and writers of the same data. But the gateway also provides uh, a local storage in the local office, so it's doing some caching of data for performance reasons that in combination with the DSNet is able to deliver the, the level of performance that the users in the local office um, require. And the Panzer Gateway is also capable of applying uh, AES-256 or military grade encryption to the data that it then stores on the DSNet, if that's something that the customer uh, is interested in or would benefit from. So is that, I mean, basically you're saying if I access something in the San Francisco office, they'll go ahead and proactively lock that file at the other three offices? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if, you, if you start writing it, I guess, right? Right. Yes, if you're if you're just writing, if you're just it, reading it. Cares, but I think if well, I guess if if you open it and you put a lock on it, like it's a Word doc or something, and you've locked it. Yeah, if you if you if you open it with the SMB open exclusive call, right. which is what a Word doc opens with, then that gets passed around. Okay. So, um, just going one layer deeper into how the uh, handshaking, if you will, between the Panzura gateway and the CleverSafe DS networks. This slide kind of breaks it down a little bit more step by step. So yeah. if you're writing a file using SIFS or NFS protocol, first the gateway is going to verify that uh, access to that file should be granted. If it is, it's going to get the lock that it needs. It's going to apply deduplication and compression. It's going to store the file locally so that it's there if somebody wants to read it right away to be served up from uh, local storage. It has an ability to apply some caching and pinning rules so you can uh, put your smarts into the box in terms of how you want it to make decisions about what data it's going to keep around locally and for how long. And then it will tell the client that I've, I've got your data so you can go do your next operation. Um, over a number of these uh, interactions with the client, it's also creating and maintaining what the Panzura system calls a, a drive file. So a drive file actually packages up a lot of incremental data changes associated with a number of files. And it's these drive files which it can then encrypt and store to the uh, DSNet. So there's a transformation that takes place between the files as viewed uh, by the clients and these drive files that the gateway creates and stores on the DSNet. That has some attractive properties. For example, um, if there's a lot of relatively small file size transactions, uh, that doesn't pass through to the other side of the gateway and create a need for a lot of very small file size transactions you know, over, over the WAN potentially. It will uh, group those into these drive files which are typically 32 megabytes in size and are a good size for that kind of WAN communication. But Rob, Panzero would do that with some other object store on the back end, right? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Not, not trying to say that this is unique, just trying, um, really what I'm trying to do here today is give a little bit more of a view of how you can put pieces together to solve customer problems. So on the read side, it's very similar. A read request comes in, the gateway verifies that you have access to the blocks that you're trying to read. Um, it figures out which drive file it needs to give you those blocks. It reads the drive file from the object store, from the DSNet, decrypts the drive file, provides those blocks back, caches them if that's consistent with the policy that it's just configured for, and uh, that's pretty much how the two systems interact together. So what this client uh, received in terms of benefits in the transition from their old separate network attached storage in every office architecture to this uh, cloud network attached storage solution was lower cost overall, uh, largely due to the ability to better utilize the storage capacity that they're paying for across numerous offices uh, and a reduction in the, the effort and complexity of supporting that environment. Um, and in that context, they're getting with the Panzura gateways on top of the cost uh, advantages of using CleverSafe's dispersed storage network, uh, the low latency local access, the SIFS and MFS protocol compatibility, 
this managed global file sharing, the locking that makes this all, uh, all really work from the end user's point of view uh, with uh, optional encryption and deduplication support. And this whole system, as I mentioned before, not just from the CleverSafe point of view, but from the Panzera point of view, uh, tolerates uh, faults at the data center site level and continues to provide service. Any, any questions uh, or comments about this use case? Yeah, I'm just curious, and this may be not your appliance's problem. <laughs> if it is a locked file distributed uh, and I can't get access to it, is, do I get notification who has it as an admin? Maybe someone left it open and you know, is that just a Windows issue? And so, so, to, so to be honest, you, you'll, you've exceeded my depth in exactly how the Panzura component of this works, so I don't know the answer to that particular question. And they, they try real hard to do just what a Windows file server would do. So or it says like Joe is on this document. Yeah, you get the same. Okay. There's, yeah, the, the latency introduces some weirdness. If you in Chicago and I in New York open the same file within a millisecond of each other. Yeah, well, that seems but, more edge case. I'm just thinking it's already kind of a, a statistical chance, a reasonable chance in one site, now if I have nine of them, <laughs> it seems right. like it's a nine times higher chance. Yeah, so, yeah, but they do, they get that information across. Okay. All right. Where's the eventual consistency dealt with? Is that, uh, is the Clever Safe system eventually consistent or not eventually consistent? We're strongly consistent. Strongly so, yeah. consistent. <laughs> is that the right technical term? Better the than, ev easy. better than eventually be consistent? We're, we maintain consistency. So if you write, an object and read an object, you will read what you just wrote. Good. From the DSNet. 